This video is going to show you how to take a Streamflow database uh, in the flux model and to separate out the hydrograph of continuous flow into base flow and direct runoff. So we take and open the flux model as we've done before and uh, I've already saved the session so uh, you know how everybody knows already how to load up a data set it's just basically the same steps with any data set that you read into the flux model you have to read continuous flow and you also have to read the sample flow so your file has to have sample flow data in it for this to work okay so I'm going to resume a save session and that save session was for the little cannon or for the cannon river base flow um, example <clears throat> Ask me if I want to use the same units of measure saved with the session. Yes. If I didn't, I could change those. And then if there is any gap in the data, it'll warn you. And here I'm going to just ignore it. So uh, the data has been saved, both the continuous flow record and the sample data. There are 96 sample values. And in this case, it's uh, sediment that was sampled as long, along with the flow. There's 4,261 continuous flow measurements. Okay, so what we're going to do here is to uh, then go up to calculate. What we want to do is we want to separate out the direct runoff from the base flow. So under calculate, the third choice here is uh, flow separation, both base flow and run direct runoff. There are several different, three different methods that are available. I suggest just using the local minimum method because that's the one that's recommended. So that's been chosen. And we may want to specify the drainage area. Here I'll do that. It's 204 square kilometers for the, <coughs> for the Little Cannon River. Doing that, saying OK, it's already done the base flow separation. We can then do a plot. And uh, here I'm going to plot uh, the flow. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, base flow separation. So here I'm going to plot the base flow separation. And I get a hydrograph like this. The uh, Upside down green triangles are the observed flow, the upside down blue triangles are the direct runoff, and the small black squares are the base flow values. These all have units of million cubic meters per year. So if we want a cubic feet per second, we have to convert to cubic feet and then of course to seconds. Now, what we'd like to do is be able to download those data. So we can go to list. And under list, we have the hydrology base flow separation. And it brings up this file, which has got the dates, the flow, which is the uh, continuous flow record, direct runoff. <coughs> First few values are not separated. Uh, because the method requires some startup time or startup days to get going uh, to make its estimate of what is base flow. So this would be a direct runoff column. This is the base flow. You can call that groundwater. You can call it groundwater plus uh, tile drainage plus interflow. Notice that the numbers here, this column plus this column, add up to the total flow column. Okay, so there are should be 4,000 some values here. All the way down 4,262. Mean value for the uh, base flow and direct runoff are given at the bottom. The uh, base flow index, which is the ratio of uh, the base flow to the total runoff in any given day, that would give you the base flow index, which is an average value over the period of time. It's uh, 0.72. So base flow is a significant component of the total flow for, for this river. All right, we can save this data into an Excel spreadsheet. 
and that way we'll be able to analyze it. So just call it the uh, little cannon base flow. So you should be able to go over here, find the file. It's got a little cannon base flow. And this will be it. So these are the data that you saw before. All the information is up here, base flow index and all that that was at the bottom of that list is now shown up here. <clears throat> now one thing here is that the dates are kind of switched around so in some of the other files that I provided for the homework assignment the dates are given in a different format. I don't know that it's possible really to change that around this way. I've tried to do that and uh, doesn't seem to want to be able to do that. Um, I want to make it uh, one slash eight slash nineteen ninety eight. That's what I'd like it to be. Um, it doesn't do that. So what I recommend here is that this is uh, January eighth, nineteen ninety eight. There's the format I want, and all you really need to do is to uh, add one. So this value here will be equal to B13 plus 1, B January 9th. And if we just copy that, and we got to be careful of where the breaks are in the data, because otherwise our dates will get messed up. So going through, trying to find those breaks in the data, we could do that. And if there were a break, then I would go to the end of that uh, where the break occurs and I would just copy those data in. Or I mean I would just copy that command in and I'll stop at this point. <coughs> and then I would start at the next, at the uh, beginning of the next, uh, at the beginning where the data starts up again. So just want to be careful of that because when you go to plot the data, it should be in the the date should be in the same format as uh, this data. Might be possible in the I haven't tried this with the flux model to specify the output format for the date, and uh, that's something I haven't tried. So it might be possible to get it to give the date in the correct format, uh, but that's for uh, some other trial to go through. So, all right. So that's how you separate out the base flow, and those values of base flow again are in million cubic meters per year. So you need to be very careful with your uh, formatting. Um, and if you want to uh, see here are the units right here, I don't know if they give the units for the base flow, but they'd be the same units as the total runoff. So that's million cubic meters per year. If we want to convert that to cubic feet per second, we got to divide. We need to uh, convert to cubic feet. There are 35.28 cubic feet per cubic meter. And then we need to, uh, of course, it's a million, so you need to multiply by a million and then divide it by 86,400. So, for instance, this one right here would be equal to E18 times a million times 35.28. That'll convert to cubic feet and divided by uh, 365 days in a year divided by 86,400 seconds in a day. So that should be a cubic feet per second. that this value corresponds to the 47 million cubic meters per year is the same thing as 53, 53 cubic feet per second. And you do that for the entire column. Okay, with that, uh, that ends this video.